Hi, we're from Cloudinary, and we're excited to present at the Festival of Dam today. I'm Susan, and I'm a customer success manager at Cloudinary. I'm a digital asset management subject matter expert, and I came to Cloudinary after years of working with digital content for companies like Microsoft, House, and eBay. And I'm Marissa. Um, I'm a technical marketer here at Cloudinary. So I actually originally started out as a developer support engineer where I got to talk to customers a lot and kind of understand what they liked, what was their frustrations. Um, and I did get to talk to them a lot about DAM, which is where I actually learned a lot about how it works. Um, and now I am on the marketing team. So I actually get to use um, DAM and practice it every day. Um, and that's how I really got to understand the benefits of it all and talk about it here with you, lovely audience today. Today, we're gonna to talk about the five cool things you never thought a DAM could do. In the digital asset management space, we've come such a long way in a short time. Here's just a short list of some of the exciting things you wouldn't expect to find in a digital DAM. First, media acceleration, also known as experience optimization. At Cloudinary, it's our core capability, the real differentiator, media acceleration. The next topic will be a single source of truth where you can take the original asset you uploaded and make infinite variations of, because automation is everything. Number three, functionality within your favorite Adobe tools. Combining the dam with the tools you use most is critical to save time to make great content. Next, we'll be talking about embeddable widgets that give you access to your DAM content and capabilities in your CMS or product experiences. And so it will be widgets like upload widget, uh, media library widget, and media editing widget. And last, number five, a DAM can offer an array of add-ons that enhance your media. Add-ons like auto-tagging, background removal, moderation, celebrity detection, and a lot of video enhancements. Cool idea number one is about delivering an experience. The content you create, upload, and collaborate on in the DAM can be the exact same content or source that gets delivered to your experiences. And AI-driven automation will take care of all the details, like formats, bit rates, browsers, codecs, crops, compression, and choice of CDN to get it right for your end users. And AI can create really cool experiences that have proven results to engage your end users. First off, rely on your DAM to do everything for you auto everything. Your DAM can deliver the right format, quality, and gravity of your assets. Format means what device and browser are you delivering to. Quality, is this a banner or a thumbnail? Can we reduce the quality without compromising the visual outcome? Gravity means your end user should never get an image that has a bad crop. Here's an example where auto format and auto quality are combined. These two features work together to ensure every image gets encoded at the right quality, the right subsampling, and in the best available format, with no visible compression artifacts and no wasted bandwidth. The first image is 75 kilobytes in JPEG, and the delivered version is 62 kilobytes in WebP for Chrome. It may not seem like much, but if you have a page that is rich with many pieces of content, having it be lighter and load faster is super important. Next count on automated gravity to find the most interesting part of an image or video. So no matter what aspect ratio you are delivering of your content, the crop will show the content you intended for your user. Responsive solutions. Upload once and deliver anywhere. With responsive solutions, upload one image to your dam and know that you will never deliver an image to a web or mobile device that is larger than the target size. This saves you the time because now you don't have to create multiple crops of that content for an infinite amount of potential sizes and devices. Those were some basic capabilities that make your experiences richer, faster, and lighter. Here are some examples that make the ordinary experiences extraordinary. Let's start with user-generated content. User-generated content for images or video is complex. Since you need user upload, quality control, moderation, filtering, and then image and video enhancement consistency prior to publishing, your DAM helps you do this at scale with automation. Your DAM can also help you adopt new trends with auto tagging of images and videos using AI, auto transcription, auto preview gen 
generation and auto playlist creation in an HTML HTML5 video player. The dam helps you launch campaigns and stories products faster. So let's talk templatizing variations using a single source of truth. So what do I mean by that? So in this situation, we're talking about transforming assets. Uh, so powerful transformations can be created and saved as presets for often used variations of the assets. Um, things that you can do in these transformation presets are special cropping, filters and effects, applying watermarks, spatial detection. The options are endless, hopefully, within your system. Uh, so you can see here down below that there's um, different transformation presets already generated, ready to go. And so we have the original, of course, and then we have Facebook, Instagram, landscape mode, portrait mode, banners, watermarks. Um, it really just depends on what the transformations are that you or your team or uh, multiple teams use often when uploading assets into your dam. And so for an example, if you often create Facebook posts, you may need to often crop your assets to fit the specific aspect ratio and whatnot. So here you can easily upload any asset into your system. You have this transformation preset ready to go. You can click on that Facebook image and it'll be generated. And then you can see with the icons in the top right corner, you can have that downloaded right away, ready to use, um, or you can have the URL generated in which you can easily embed that into your website or pass on the URL to your developer um, to embed within your website for you. So it really is just a fast way of getting your assets into your CMS, onto your website, whatever it is that it may be that you need to put it into. So you can see here um, with this transformation preset, we essentially created something a little more customized. And here we are showing what different images could look like inside of a black frame. So powerful transformations can get long and tiresome to apply each and every time. As you can see here, there's a lot of different things going on inside this URL. We're setting the quality, we're doing different crop modes, we're setting the height, um, doing overlays, setting the DPR. There's a lot of different things that really go into creating this particular transformation. Um, so that might not be something that you want to have to create each and every time that can be really tiresome. And for those of you who may want to keep um, your creation, transformation capabilities more internal, uh, this is a way to expose what it is you're doing exactly to create this. Um, so that may be something that you want to avoid. And long URLs can be complicated to replicate and create new renditions. So for this example, it's a little bit more along the customization slash personalization side. Um, so this may be something that you want to be able to apply to a lot of different assets fast. Um, so transformation presets are a really great way to do this. So what does it look like once you apply these transformation presets within the URL? So now you can see we've got it down to a much shorter URL. And here in this URL, all we had to do was simply create um, what we called the black frame transformation preset. So here we have T underscore black frame so that it knows to pick up this particular set of actions um, and is now applying it to this mountain getaway JPEG image. So it's an easy way to replicate the advanced transformations, especially if they're made by somebody else. Um, if you have a transformation expert on your team, you can really benefit from their work of creating this and just applying in the future. So it's a quick way to um, generate the same transformation on a lot of different assets. As you can see, the URL looks much more clean and straightforward. Um, it's a fast way to apply transformations, which are often used for different assets. And you can also build upon these transformation presets. So let's say you want to, um, maybe you want to add it, you want to change the width and height, you want to make it a little bigger or smaller, you can also add that in so that you can apply additional transformations as needed on top of these transformation presets. So it's a really powerful um, thing that you can use within your dam. And now, as you can see here, to kind of bring it back full circle, if you also want to use this black frame transformation preset often, you can add it back in and you can see it being applied here. If you're editing illustrations, photos, or media for print, working with your assets directly in the dam is a great way to control versions, or when you want to fine tune assets that are already being used in your experiences, or if you want to templatize styles. 
Most vinyl assets have multiple contributors. Let's say one person does a photo shoot, another does the editing, another approves the content, and another does the layout with text. Open your content from the DAM in Adobe products and save it back to the DAM and everyone can collaborate on the same file. Even better, embedded links will update with the latest versions. Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator all work with DAM tools to edit your single source of truth content. Here's my media library. I'm going to show you two different ways to work with an asset. One with overlays and the other with a layered media file. Think like a PSD file or even a PDF. In this example, I have multiple different file types in my account. This is the original PSD file that has multiple layers. And I, in this example, I have a dog that has a lot of different hats on it. You can see I've broken out each one of those layers with transparency in my example here. So I can show you both different types. Now I have Photoshop open and I've opened up the Adobe connector to my media library. You can see that this is the exact same version of my media library that I'm connecting to. And I can go to the exact same file and work with those assets. So if I need to make edits to those assets, it's gonna save, it's gonna be able to be saved directly back to the dam. And then if those assets are already being used somewhere, they will update. I also have capability of the dam tools within Photoshop now so that I can make all of those uh, great edits, add metadata, rename my files, um, and enhance the content with add-ons. There's also a Creative Cloud connector uh, that can be used with Illustrator in the same way and in InDesign. And another way that you can use Adobe tools in your URLs of your delivered assets is that you can take an asset from your DAM and you can apply an XMP file to it that will make uh, photo changes to your asset. Um, and you can apply that file, and I'll show you here, I'm referencing it in the URL right here. You can apply that file across all of your content and scale it that way. So if you had a large photo shoot, you'd be able to take the same um, image edits that you had done across one and apply it across all of the content there. And especially if you had some kind of like cool filter, like you know you were cartoonifying the content or tinting it or making it all black and white or adding a vignette, there's so many different things that you can do with the content, it's really infinite. So embeddable widgets can be a way to offer different functionalities of your DAM within your uh, website or mobile app. So let's start with the upload widget. So this is an interactive UI that enables users to upload files from a variety of sources. Um, as you can see here, you can upload local files, take a picture in your camera and upload that right away. You can um, put in a web address, do a Google image search. There is uh, endless options here, which is great because you want to be flexible with your users as people store their assets in all types of different locations. Um, and something like this works on any device. As you can see here, this works on mobile devices. Um, it can work on tablets, uh, really lets you be flexible. Um, something like the upload widget supports upload progress indication. You want to make sure that your users aren't confused to the uh, image upload or not. They're not sure. This really gives more clarity. Um, thumbnail upload previews and interactive croppings, which is great in the situation where maybe somebody is taking a photo from their camera and then uploading that as a profile picture that really lets you um, crop your asset before it's actually uploaded into the system. And then you can customize them to suit your functional and responsive design requirements. Everyone knows you want to have um, responsive functionality. You want to make sure this upload widget um, is displaying right, whether it's on a desktop or mobile app. Um, that is something you always want to keep in mind. Another example of a widget is a media library widget. Um, so this uh, essentially opens up your whole media library within this widget. Not to fret for those of you who may have folder inception, folder inside a folder inside a folder, um, you can specify with the media library widget, or you should be able to specify uh, which folders that you open up to. You can 
take it a step further and decide if you want to be able to insert one asset at a time, multiple assets, um, the customizations are up to you. So for example, you can use this type of widget inside of your WordPress CMS. So if you're looking um, for the right asset to post, you can take advantage of the full DAM capabilities with something like this. So you need to find it, um, search predominant colors or location. You can quickly find that asset to insert into your posts. And then of course, um, customizations for the look and feel. You can um, change what the buttons look like, maybe add in a logo. Uh, there are there should be different features that you can customize on your own to really go with the look and feel of your particular brand. Next is the media editor widget. So this is kind of coming full circle with the section that I had talked about previously with transformation presets and then kind of going through your media library uh, combined together. So here, this provides a set of common editing actions to your users on your website or your app. Um, here, you can help scale internal operations by eliminating the need to rely on your design team. Um, you know, we typically don't want to bug our design team with something as simple as changing the width and height of your asset. So this really provides a way to do that directly or just apply those transformation presets um, that have been generated for those common transformations that you need to apply. You can have them here ready to go. Um, and then this can combine AI and manual editing for the different workflows that you may have. So an example of how something like this would work can be in multiple steps. So here you can crop and resize. Uh, you can see the interactive cropping here. We've got the transformation presets ready to go. Um, you can input that width and height, um, or you can lock it if you would like. You've got the flip, you've got the rotate. There's a lot of different things that you can do in this first step um, to get it to the specific cropping width and height mode. And then after that, you may want to apply an image overlay, such as here, applying a company logo. Um, and then you can see on the right side, there's logo positioning guidelines, which I'm sure design teams would be happy about so that you can put it in some place that they've deemed uh, no longer um, following the guidelines. So this ensures that you are putting it in an acceptable area. And then once you apply that image overlay, you can export it. And you can choose the quality, the format that you want to export it as. Um, here you've got JPEG, PNG, or a WebP. Um, and you can see you can download it directly or export it. So the options are endless. So you can see with widgets, they provide a lot of different types of functionality and customizations that can fit within a lot of different workflows. When working with content, anything you can do to automate the results gives you more time to figure out the fun stuff that you want to do next. Not only should your DAM adapt to your tech stack, it should provide add-ons that enhance your media and make automation easier. Add-ons enable you to enhance your images and videos using functionality offered by vision and image processing partners. Add-ons are simple to use and can be fully integrated into your image and video management pipeline. And add-ons typically have a free tier for testing purposes. Let's name some great add-ons. One is auto-tagging. Um, auto-tagging can be accomplished using Amazon, Google, or Amaga's deep neural network models. And it automatically identifies scenes and suggests tags for your content. Tags can be applied to images upon or after uploading. Another great add-on is content moderation. This is great for UGC. You can use Amazon, Google, or Web Purify to ensure your content isn't offensive, as well as keep malware out of your account with Meta Defender. Then there's background removal. You can easily remove the background from any image, either with manual editing from a service like Pixels or with deep learning algorithms. And this can be applied during the upload process. In addition to add-ons, there are plugins that connect the dam directly to your publishing tools like WordPress or Magento or do a deep dive and integrate with Salesforce Commerce Cloud, or simply place a DAM URL into a Workfront ticket. The possibilities to enhance your experiences with add-ons are endless. Now we covered a lot in this section, but just to quickly go over everything we talked about, we went over media acceleration, templatizing variations using a single source of truth, 
having functionality inside Adobe products, offering embeddable widgets, and providing an array of add-ons. I hope you enjoyed our talk today. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you.